Lately, I've seen a lot of text-heavy websites implement what's called a reading progress indicator. This is usually a progress bar that sits at the top of your page, and as you scroll down, that bar gets wider, essentially letting you know how further down the page you scrolled, therefore how much more you have to read. Now, this is really easy to implement with JavaScript. Now, if you don't have any coding knowledge, there are plugins out there that do this for you, and you can even find those for WordPress. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to code one of these uh, reading progress uh, indicators uh, using vanilla CSS and JavaScript. I'm Adi Purdila with Envato Tuts Plus, and I think we should dive right in. But before we do that, I want to quickly tell you about Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to logos and fonts, but also to millions of other digital assets like stock photos and videos, HTML landing pages, WordPress themes, and more. Subscribe now with the link in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. I have a simple demo prepared for you here, a div class container, and inside a bunch of headings and paragraphs. And I did this to create like a really long page that we can use to, uh, to scroll and uh, to test our uh, code. The first step is to create a div with a class or an ID of progress bar. And this will be used uh, to display our uh, indicator. It can be any element you want, and you can name it whatever you want. In my case, it's a div ID progress bar. Next, inside the CSS, we're going to do the following. We're going to define a CSS custom property. So progress bar. Is this how I named it? Let's do it like this. Progress dash bar. So inside, we're going to define a custom property where a CSS variable, as it's also called. And we're going to call that scroll amount. It's very important that we use a CSS property because this is what will change later from JavaScript. Now, how you style this is uh, really up to you. I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, the first is to use a linear gradient. And for that, I'm going to go to a website called webgradients.com. And here, you can uh, just basically find a gradient that you like. Let's say, for example, this one, copy the CSS, and you can paste it directly here as a background image. And then I'm just going to set the width to the value of that variable. So scroll amount. Cool. Next, I'm just going to set this up at 10% because I want to be able to see it. I'm going to set its height to four pixels. Position, I want it to be fixed. So I want it to stay in exactly the same place as I'm scrolling. And let's align it to the top. So top zero. So it stays right there. And let's also set the left to zero as well. Although if I'm going to set uh, a normalize a reset on this file, this, uh, this left zero might not be um, needed anymore. Now, let's set this back to zero. And let's worry about our JavaScript. This is where all the magic happens. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to listen for the scroll event on our document. So I'm going to say document, add event listener. We're going to listen for the scroll. And when that happens, we're going to fire up a function that's called process scroll. Now, let's go ahead and write that function. I'm going to be using the ES6 uh, syntax here. So let process scroll equals. This is, by the way, basically the same as defining, saying this function process scroll, right? It's exactly the same thing, but we're using the newer syntax, which personally I like a lot more. Now in here, we're going to start by defining a couple of variables. Doc lm is going to be equal to document dot document element. Doc body is going to be document body. And I'm using these 
shorthand notations because it's just going to make our code um, a bit more readable. Now, how do we determine the position of our scroll bar? Well, it's pretty simple. We need to figure out the position of the top or the scroll top, then the position of the scroll bottom. We divide those two and we got our percentage or exactly where the scroll is in our page. To do that, we'll first start with the scroll top. That's going to be equal to doc lm. I meant to say this scroll top or doc body scroll top. Now, this notation or allows us to cover more browsers. So if a certain browser doesn't support document dot document element scroll top, we're going to get body scroll top. Again, this is just for increasing the browser support. The scroll bottom is going to be very similar. And that's going to be doc element. And instead of scroll top, we're going to say scroll height. But there's a catch here. From this, we need to subtract the window inner height. Okay. So basically, scroll height just gives us the height of the entire page. To determine the position of the scroll bottom, we need to subtract the inner height or the height of the viewport from our overall height. And we do that by using window.inner height. So that's our scroll bottom value. Now to find the percentage, it's very simple. We say scroll percent equals scroll top divided by scroll bottom. So let's actually do a console log for scroll percent. So you can see what is happening. And I'm just going to open up the console here. And now you'll see that when I scroll, that percentage changes, right? See this, the, I'm at about 50% of the way. And my scroll percentage here is 0. Point almost 50. And when I get all the way to the bottom is really close to one. Now, to be able to use this in CSS, we need to first multiply it by 100 and also add the percentage sign. So now you'll see that when I'm uh, scrolling, we now have a different value 42%, basically, just you can ignore uh, the other decimals. And when I get to the bottom, I'm really close to 100%. And let me actually show you uh, the scroll top and scroll bottom as well. So you can understand how uh, they play out in the, in this equation of ours. So we have scroll top slash scroll bottom slash percentage. That's the last one. So now you'll see that as I'm scrolling, right, these are the values that we're getting. 2575 is the scroll bottom and that's a constant. All right, because that's the height of our content. 622 is the height of the content that's not visible in the top part. And this value at the end is uh, the percentage or the scroll percentage, how much I scrolled in the page. And as you can see, when I bring it up, it's zero. When I bring it all the way down is like really close to 100%. So now, what do we do with this value? Well, let me comment this out. It's simple, we change that uh, CSS custom property, and we set it to the scroll percent. For that, we can say document get element by ID, we're going to target our progress bar dot style dot set property. And we're going to put in the name of our CSS property, which in our case is scroll amount. And we're going to set that to 
our JavaScript variable called scroll percent. And that's it. Now you'll see that as I'm scrolling in the top part of the page, you can see that scroll bar is slowly filling in. And just for this demo, let me make this like a lot bigger so uh, you can see it. There we go. And of course, this uh, automatically adjusts depending on the viewport width. And that's all there is to it, really. Now, I mentioned that I'm going to show you two ways of displaying this, um, this progress bar. This is one of the ways where you have a, like a full element here with a full linear background or solid background, and you just change its width. Another way would be the following. You can set a background as a linear gradient. Let's say to the right, you can start with any color that you want. Let's do F24 E1E. This is a kind of a red slash orange color. And here we're going to use the CSS variable. So var scroll amount. And the second part of the gradient would be transparent zero. And then you would set the width of the element to 100%. And this will work exactly the same way. The only difference is now you're mimicking that movement of the progress bar by changing the position of a linear gradient stop instead of the previous approach where we changed the actual width of the element. So either one of these approaches works. Personally, I would prefer this one because I can add uh, a linear gradient to it and just changing the width like this seems uh, the better approach. But you can go with either one. And you can position this element anywhere you want. As long as you have this JavaScript code that generates a scroll percent that you can then send to CSS, there are so many ways you can uh, create an indicator like this. Maybe you would have an SVG that's going to fill up like uh, one of those activity rings from an Apple Watch. Or you can have like a vertical bar, which can fill up the same way. Instead of horizontal, you would have vertical. There's a lot of uses for this. But essentially, this is how you do it. You set up a CSS custom property or a CSS variable. And you then calculate the scroll percentage in JavaScript, and you set that as the new value for that CSS variable. As I was saying, this uh, type of indicator is uh, best suited for uh, long text-heavy pages, like the ones you would find in a blog, right? Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense to have one, right? Because if the page is uh, just too short, it's pointless to, to inform the user how much uh, they scrolled uh, inside the page. With that said, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi Pordila, and until next time, take care.